Hi, Kate. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm great. I saw the first two episodes of Loki, and I, so I'm loving life. The show's so good. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I'm really glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> I, I want to start with some of the world building you're doing, it, like like literally how you're doing it, because like the TVA, we see rooms and worlds and everything. I know it's like partially the Atlanta Marriott, which is so cool. Uh, but you know, how did did you pull from any comics? Where did you get like what what did you do to establish the world of the TVA? Well, I think the fun thing for us, right, is that it was a really big challenge, right? Because it's this organization that exists outside of space and time. So I was like, okay, there's no sun. It's not on a planet. (laughs) Like, so how do I show this? And something really awesome in the comics where they show the TVA is they have like, you know, those images of like the desks stretching off into infinity. So that's definitely something that me and my production designer and our visual effects team took a lot of inspiration from. Like you see in that viewpoint, it's almost like a city that stretches into infinity, but it's not really a city. It's just like an office that stretches into infinity. So I think we definitely took inspiration from the comics. Um, I'm also like a big fan of sci-fi and I wanted the show to be kind of a love letter to sci-fi. So, I mean, I stole from everyone. (laughs) So, you know, Blade Runner, Metropolis, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, There's so many different places that we pulled from. I mean, I grew up in Southeast London, which is like, there's a lot of brutalist kind of architecture around there. Like they filmed a Clockwork Orange near where I live. And I was excited to kind of pull that idea that we've seen, you know, in films like Blade Runner, but marry that up with like, you know, the more Midwest kind of classy heroic style because the TVA are heroic and I wanted to show that. So it was fun kind of melding those two styles together. And then also just bringing in with that, like my own experiences and offices, like, you know, like I, I worked as a temp a lot and I remember like the technology, like where I used to work wasn't like the most updated. So I was like, oh, it'd be so fun if like the technology in the TVA maybe isn't the most sophisticated looking technology, but it's still, you know, it works and it's powerful. So why replace it? So we have this kind of retro futuristic kind of look across a lot of our tech and it was really fun. I mean, and some of that does have references to sci-fi. Like I think the font on one of the computers is very similar to the font on the computers in Alien. Uh, The time doors we have were inspired by Dune. So I think there's definitely a lot of nods that people that love sci-fi will enjoy and, I just, yeah, it was fun kind of, it was just honestly just like a really fun playground to be in and set up. Yeah, a whole new I can't wait to see more so, of it. Yeah. I cannot wait to see yeah. more of it. And I, I love that we get this Loki that is the, the Loki from 2012. So a lot hasn't happened to him yet. But he's also, I mean, I feel like from what I've seen in trailers and stuff, maybe you're kind of uh, expanding like his power set and he's, or he's doing things we haven't seen him do before. Can you talk about that at all? Like what you're adding to the character? Yeah, I think for me, like, I was really excited to get to show more of his magic in the show because, you know, he, I think it's like 79 minutes maybe across all the MCU films and obviously within two hours, like, and, and there's a lot going on all the in, in all the films he's in, you can only show so much. And I thought, well, if we have six hours, we should be, you know, let's push it more and let's see el- what else he can do. So, yeah, so I definitely would say, like, I think the joy of our show is that it's unique in the sense that we're starting with a Loki from Avengers. So he hasn't gone on this incredible journey that he's been on in the other MCU films. But with that, we're putting him into this whole new corner of the MCU. He's, you know, it's like chaos and institution. I don't know how that's going to meld, but I think it's fun just to see a character on it who we is familiar to us, but in a very different scenario and, you know, nature and nurture seeing like, how is he going to react to this new world we've put him in? So and so my last thing for you is that as a Marvel fan, when I hear things like multiversal wars and when I see Infinity Stones just sitting in drawers, I'm like, whoa, 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 this is that we're getting crazy in the first episode. And I'm not going to run this until after the first episode airs, but I would like to hear from you bringing those Easter eggs in and doing those things that are going to spawn so many theories and possibly really just expand this MCU lore in dramatic ways, you know. How, how does it feel to have that responsibility and how do you cook up those details? It's def- I think it was, I think it's fun, right? Like I remember when I first read the pilot script because the Infinity Stones joke was in there from like when I read the pilot and I remember it was like Loki seeing those and I was like, what? <laughs> like, I was like, but I think it's kind of genius, right? Because you feel like Loki in that moment because he's like, huh? He's like, but I... I went through a lot, (laughs) like, what, what do you mean? You're toying with my emotions. And I think that's kind of the fun thing, right? With with us doing that is that we're kind of hopefully showing to the audience that, yeah, this is not, this isn't 
new part of the MCU and the rules that had been set up and not the rules anymore. And I think, yeah, like I always enjoyed that joke, but also I think it's a really good marker for, you know, the fish out of water story almost with Loki that we are really going to see this place through his eyes and be like, yeah, like what the hell is going on? Like, so yeah. So I, no, I just, it was just very fun. It was very yeah. fun. Loki starts with a version of the character from 2012 uh, who's pulled out of Avengers Endgame and sent to the kind of the post game of the Avengers. He has not experienced the Dark World. He has not experienced Ragnarok or Infinity War. What was the key to getting that Loki, to getting the, Tom back in that mindset uh, on the screen? It was really interesting because I know like me and Tom would talk about certain scenes from Avengers. I remember when we were trying to like really like hone in on that. I remember we spoke about that amazing scene he has with Scarlet and how intimidating he is in that scene and we kind of kept talking about that with the time theater obviously because it's similar right when he's going to the time theater with mobius he's like i'm better than this person you know with mobius and i think clearly quickly he obviously works out that he's probably met his match <laughs> and i think that was something that we spoke about a lot and just kind of making sure that yeah we were kind of following that emotional like path for him because that was a real challenge i think because obviously the loki that we all love is like, you know, he's in a very different place <laughs> in the recent movies. So, well, almost recent infinity war, I guess, Endgame, we set off our Loki, which is fun. <laughs> right. Right. So did you, did you have to like talk to James Gunn at all? Cause I'm pretty sure he's about to go through something similar with Gamora for guardians three. Did you guys have to collaborate at all on how the like character plucked out of a timeline works? Oh, I would love to speak to James Gunn. No, I did not speak to James Gunn. I follow him on Twitter and I'm I'm a big fan of Guardians of the Galaxy. So no, we didn't we didn't speak, no. But I mean Marvel are pretty good at like, you know, keeping us like I mean but it's an interesting one though in a way, because Marvel obviously they oversee all that stuff, but I wouldn't say like me or the writers ever felt necessarily restrained by that. I think it's always Kevin Feige always goes back to what's best for the story. And if it's best for story, we'll make it work. So yeah. Yeah, so far the story has been great. So I, I think Marvel, I don't know, well, maybe they're onto something at Marvel. They might have, you know, a little bit of success. Now, I'm curious, with we, the two Disney Plus shows we've seen so far, WandaVision and The Falcon and Winter Soldier, I feel like the journeys of those shows, WandaVision set us up with a full-on Scarlet Witch. And then Falcon and Winter Soldier gave us uh, Sam accepting the shield and full-on Captain America. Is there kind of a, a character who has, would you say, a similar journey in Loki who really uh, just develops into something even more or, or just one character who you really think is one that people are going to connect to that you're really excited to see. So I would say like, you know, our guy, Loki, <laughs> obviously he's going to go on quite an incredible journey. And I think, you know, the show's called Loki and I think that's the real core thing. But I would also say across the show, all our characters have really interesting journeys across this, you know, to do with identity and like, are they good? Are they bad? Is it more gray area? And I, th I think that's something that I'm excited with all the characters, to be honest, and how they all uh, fall into that kind of gray area across the show. Are we going to get at least one wow from Owen Wilson as Mobius? A good Owen Wilson? You know, I don't think we have one. A lot no. of people are asking me this, and I don't know if we have one. <laughs> Owen, <laughs> Owen wanted to do something really outside of himself. And yeah, I mean, I guess that's, there you go. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe one snuck in there, but I don't think we do. Yeah, it would be it would be quite a moment. It might be a little too meta, but it would be pretty. It would be quite a moment. I know the memes would go crazy. Yeah. Which uh, which episode do you think is the one that people are really going to have the strongest reactions to across social media and online and everything? I would. This isn't like a trick answer. It's just like I do think genuinely like me and the team, we're so aware that this was coming out weekly. And like, for example, like me and Michael, like we, we, I know we both love Lost. And like, I used to talk about that every week with all my friends and I'd have many arguments with my friends and be like, no, this is what the story is about. And like, but I do think- I still do that about Lost today. Yeah, but I think there's something fun about it, right? That kind of weekly event cinema, like, um, sorry, and television that, so, sorry, because I always think of it like a film, <laughs> but, but the weekly television event like Game of Thrones did the same. And I think we were so aware that we were coming out weekly that, you know, we want it to feel big and bold like a movie and we ran it like a movie. But the story is designed in a sense that we want to have conversations at the end of every episode and we want to create excitement and stir up 
you know, thoughts and theories. And yeah, it's, it's, you know, something to be enjoyed. I mean, I love going to the movies, but I equally love, you know, I would say arguments. My friends are going to be like, yep. Uh, like, but the arguments you have with friends in a bar afterwards, you know, that's kind of the joy of it. Yeah. It's so cool. Well, listen, it's a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you for your enthusiasm on social media around this. It's been so <laughs> fun to watch. I know you're having a blast. Congratulations. The show's great. I hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you so much. Cheers. Congrats. I love the show so far. Seeing two episodes, you're, you're knocking it out of the park already. Thank you, dude. So uh, listen, I, I want to start with Loki seemingly for the first time being outmatched by a bigger brain. This is a character who thinks he's always the smartest person in the room. And right now maybe found his kryptonite in people who know more than him. Uh, talk to me about finding a good match for the God of mischief. That was, that was absolutely the, the exciting part of putting him in the TVA, you know, and, and that was uh, he, here is a guy who thrives on chaos on, um, uh, you know, on always being one step ahead, running up against an organization that is absolute order. Uh, and it's, they're not one step ahead. They don't even deal in steps. Uh, and so then it was about, okay, how do we take what the TVA represents and almost distill them down into a single character? Uh, and that became Mobius, Owen's character, whose energy is so different from Loki's, but there's such an almost patience about him and how he deals with Loki that is weirdly the thing probably most uh, suited to drive Loki crazy. Yeah, I mean, I love Owen oh, Wilson is such a perfect casting set because he has like that soft, calm confidence uh, but also a good presence to keep Loki moving. I love it. And I want to talk about Mobius. I, I think that character is so entertaining uh, did you get to do how much do we get to flesh out through six episodes with that character? Uh, well, I'm excited. I'm excited for everybody to watch and find <laughs> out. I mean, I've, I've been, I've been excited even just reading this morning, folks seem to really be responding to that character. That was one of my favorite parts, uh, in writing the show. You know, there wasn't much to that character in the comics. So that was a chance, uh, for me to just kind of run wild and, and do something fairly original. And, and yeah, we, we all love Mobius. So. Yeah. What's the secret sauce? Because once you start dabbling with time travel stories, I feel like it's really easy to run into paradoxes and just issues like that. What's the secret sauce? How do you got to manage that as the writer, as the brain behind this, this creatively? <clears throat> well, I think that it's especially difficult because this is a show. Um, meaning, you know, there's six, there's going to be a week between each of these episodes. That's a week of time for people to scrutinize, uh, our logic and, and figure out what doesn't make sense and, and all of that, as opposed to a time travel movie where maybe you watch it, if something doesn't make sense. You can walk out and forget about it. We don't have that luxury. So we worked really hard early on with our writer's room to establish at least as airtight as we could get it, a sort of foundational set of time travel rules that the TVA abided by um, and, and that we, you know, tried to live the rest of the show by. Yeah, I can't wait to see where you guys take that. I mean, so far, so good. I, I can't wait to see more. Um, from, from Loki, you move on to Doctor Strange. I know WandaVision leads into Doctor Strange and like we have Captain Falcon and Winter Soldier. Like each of these shows seem to be kind of... Uh, leading into another title. Does this kind of lead into anything from where you're sitting? You know, I think that, I think everybody will have a better idea of that when I, on the other, on the other end of it. Uh, but I, I'll just say that our charge, you know, the and, and goal from the beginning was tell a complete thrilling story that can stand alone. Uh, and, and by the end of it, we'll, we'll see what we blew the lid on. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see it. I, if I can't ask you anything about Doctor Strange, I just would love to hear about the scope of that. What, like in comparison to the first Doctor Strange versus like an Avengers, like where on that spectrum does this movie fall? <sighs> Again, I, I, if, I think if I answer that, this thing is going to swallow me. That's fine. That's just, fine. That's if you fine. hit me this thing, it's going to swallow me. You'll never see me again. I'm so sorry. Well, I have sorry. great news because I think I have another question you might not be able to answer, but I'll okay. get in trouble if I don't ask. Okay. I, I would love to hear about working with Kevin Feige in Marvel versus working with Kevin Feige at Star Wars. Like just the collaborative process 
Does that change at all when you go from one franchise to the other? You know, my, again, it, it's working with Kevin it, as I've found and it's, and it's very early days on the other thing. It's working with Kevin's working with Kevin. He's great. Uh, he, he's the same guy uh, in, in whatever capacity you're doing. And, and so that's, that's why I'm happy to just keep, keep making stuff with the guy. Yeah. And I have a couple of questions about the first episode that I'm going to hold until after the first episode airs, right. because I have to, you, you, you've tossed things in like infinity stones, which a couple years ago, we would have lost our minds to see those. And I still jumped up and pointed at the screen. You mentioned multiversal wars. There's just so much world building when things like that come in and they show how powerful the TVA is in this MCU. I mean, you know, how do you guys develop like these, these things that have a, a massive impact on the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe that are debuting on the show on Disney Plus. I mean, our, our, you know, from day one, we were like, look, this thing should be as vital as a movie. There was, there was no cap on our imagination or on the, uh, on, on what we could do or what we couldn't do because it, it was on Disney Plus. It, as far as we can, we were concerned, we were telling the next most important chapter in the MCU uh and and so you know that that meant yeah let's get infinity stones in there um and and so yeah you want to casually just casually in a drawer (laughs) uh well and i and i think that speaks to the the power of the tva you know is yeah think about it a couple years ago infinity stones stopped us in our tracks now they're getting wheeled around in a cart uh by the handful what does that mean about where loki is Yeah. And my last thing for you, speaking of where Loki is, this is a version of the character that's picking up from 2012. He hasn't experienced the dark world, Ragnarok, Infinity War, any of those things. You know, from your perspective, what is what is the headspace of this Loki starting the show uh, who just kind of failed to invade New York and hasn't had the big redemptive arc that we've seen? Yeah, I mean, this guy just took a big L. He's, he, I think he's humiliated. He's, he's humble. He's probably sore because he got his ass kicked by the Hulk. Uh, that Hulk smash was not that, that long ago. Um, so I think that, you know, he's frustrated like, like Loki, like you might expect him to do. He, he's apt to double down and not, not necessarily learn from his mistakes, but he's desperate. And and he's he's angry. So so we're finding him him in a little bit of a corner, which I think is a really interesting place to catch up with a character who's already dangerous. You saw what he was capable of when he was in that cage in Avengers, uh, when he was in that cell. So it's it's going to be cool. It it seems like it's just a continuation of Loki's no good, really terrible, awful bad day. Exactly <laughs> one, one one crazy day. Well, listen, thank you so much for taking the time to talk. I can't wait to see more of the show and hopefully talk with you again soon. Thanks, dude. 